Let's make Thanksgiving turkey. Add a cup of sugar, a cup of salt, allspice, sage, dill, juniper berries, thyme, parsley. Schmaltz it around, bring it to a boil, get a large container. Add in your brine. Oh! Submerge it. Cover up your turkey with a foil blanket and let your husband place it in the fridge for at least 24 hours. Let it drain. Let it dry. Stuff the butt. Stuff it with onion, garlic, carrot, celery, parsley, dill. Get it all in there. The butter rub. Pound of butter to a bowl. Teaspoon of garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper, herbs de Provence, a lot of sage, fine sea salt, fresh thyme. Mix it all together. Put it under the skin and over the skin. Turkey is buttered. I have my turkey done right? Love this thing. Bought it on Amazon. Slide your turkey on. Trust the legs. Place your turkey in your oven. Cook your turkey at 375 till the internal temperature is 165. Ooh. Turkey, turkey, turkey. <laughs> Check your turkey's tip. Let your turkey rest for a few minutes. And when your turkey is done, plate all of your turkey up. And you have something delicious. Today we're doing smash burgers. On the Blackstone. Start with five or six pieces of bacon. Start with two pounds of ground beef. The fattier, the better. I'm grating in a stick of frozen butter. Mix it all together. Roll them into the size of a golf ball. Chop up one onion. Add the onions into the bacon fat. Cook the onions until caramelized while I enjoy a dusty IPA for more brewery. Put the burger balls on the grill. Smash them down flat. Season them with pepper. Salt and some Lowry season salt. A little scoop of onions to every burger. Add your favorite cheese. I use King's Hawaiian rolls. Put the tops on top of the cheese. Put a pick on each bun. Most important part, wrap two or three in tin foil. Put them in the oven at 150 for 10 minutes. Did you know you could deep fry deviled eggs? Fill a pot with water and add in baking soda, of course. The baking soda helps make the eggs easier to peel. Boil them for 12 minutes, then chill in ice water and peel. Cut the eggs in half and make your filling any way you like it. I made mine super simple with mayo, mustard, relish, salt, and pepper, but you can put in whatever you like. Batter the egg whites in flour, egg, and panko and fry until golden and crisp. It took me about a minute and a half to two minutes. Fill with filling and enjoy the crunchy deliciousness. Let's cook some spicy tuna when it giddy. First, you're going to need one can of tuna, two tablespoons of mayo, one tablespoon of sriracha, one teaspoon of sesame oil. Give it a mix and set aside. You're going to need some white rice. This onigiri press, which I got from Daiso. You're going to add the white rice to it, one teaspoon of the filling, and top it off with the white rice once again. Give it a press, and it should form this beautiful onigiri. Now you're going to need some nori. Ola is paksajin from Ituan class. Wrap the onigiri. Dip the sides. This is how I like to do it. Sir, enjoy. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make some homemade beef jerky. To a large bowl, we're gonna add half a cup of liquid aminos, half cup of Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons of black pepper, a tablespoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of red pepper flakes, a tablespoon of hickory smoke, and a tablespoon of your favorite hot sauce. I'm going with sriracha. And then you wanna mix everything together. Then you want to take two pounds of thinly sliced sirloin and mix it with the liquid. Once everything is mixed, you want to leave this in the fridge overnight. 24 hours later, we're ready to dehydrate the meat in a dehydrator. I found this on Amazon for 80 bucks. Link is in my bio. Grab the meat one slice at a time and place it in the dehydrator. All right, once you're done filling up the dehydrator, you're going to set this to 160 degrees for seven hours. And there you have it, homemade beef jerky. It's so easy to do. you eating those from store? So delicious. Those? <laughs> First, we melt butter, then add sugar and vanilla extract in the butter to mix well. Then we add melted semi-sweet chocolate chips into the butter mixture with one egg. In another bowl, we mix four dried ingredients together. We combine the wet and dry together. Just like you use Play-Doh, then we set on the side room temperature for an hour. Now, while you are waiting, we make the white filling. Then I just have my son clean up for me. The oil dough, after an hour, kind of firm, so we put on parchment paper, roll into a a long log. Now we chill this in the fridge for two hours. So now the log is firm in quarter inch slice. Now we bake in the oven 325 for 20 to 25 minutes. Let it cool. Now we make the Oreo sandwich. If you enjoy my food, like and follow. Let's make whip feta dip. First you're gonna add tomatoes, olive oil, salt and pepper into a baking pan and you're gonna bake at 350 for 30 minutes. Then we're gonna crumble some feta, add some olive oil, cream cheese and water. That's what makes it extra creamy into a food processor and process for about two to three minutes. We're gonna add some lemon zest and honey 
process again and now look how creamy that feta dip is. Then we're going to add the dip to a bowl and we're going to garnish it with our roasted tomatoes and olive oil. Now I like to add it directly to the center of the dip and make sure you add the olive oil all over. Then we're going to garnish with some oregano and thyme. Look how beautiful that is and we're going to dip some fresh bread in there. Wow. Triple chocolate edible cookie dough. Two thirds cup of flour. Don't forget to heat treat this to kill any of the bacteria since we're eating it raw. You can just pop it in the microwave for about a minute and a half. Half a cup of softened butter, one cup of sugar, and one fourth teaspoon of salt. Now blend this up until it's nice and fluffy. Now add one teaspoon of vanilla and one and a half tablespoons of milk. Now add your flour and one third cup of cocoa powder and blend that up. Okay, last part, best part. You're gonna take some chocolate chips. I prefer the dark chunks because it makes it extra chocolatey. Sprinkle them on in, measure with love, and blend them in. Whoa, look at that. Ooh! Best ever. Pull the skin off in strips. Now long ways, slice one half inch pieces like so. Lay the eggplant out on a baking tray. Be generous with some olive oil. Evenly coat all sides, salt and pepper. Season both sides. Bake at 425 degrees Fahrenheit until softened. For a sauce, we're adding plain yogurt, crushed garlic, tahini or tahini, salt, pepper. Mix. Pomegranate molasses is a game changer here. A squeeze of lemon juice. Sauce is ready. Once the eggplant is done baking, remove it. Use whatever veggies you like. Spread some sauce. Add the eggplant. Sprinkle on some nut, cucumber, tomato, red onion, lemon, pickles. Personal favorite part, fresh mint. And now eat up. Enjoy. Have you ever seen these at the grocery store and wondered what to do with them? This is rice paper and it comes in either circles or squares. I'm gonna show you a bunch of different things you can do with them over the next few videos. The first thing we're gonna make is a wrap for me to take to work today. First thing you're gonna do is submerge it into some room temperature water. I'm using some leftover chickpea salad, some iceberg lettuce for crunch, some shredded carrots, and some tomato. I fold the bottom over and then the sides just a little bit. Then I use my fingers to kind of hold the items while I wrap, almost like you would a burrito. Okay, I'm gonna cut that in half. And I have a wrap for work. It's gluten-free, vegan. You can fill these with anything you like. They're so good for you. And these wraps are like five calories each if you're counting calories. And stay tuned for some other videos. I'm gonna show you how I make rice paper bacon next. This Greek dip is one of my favorite things to make and eat. I can eat the whole thing by myself in two days, not kidding. It starts with some hummus on the bottom of a dish. I did roasted garlic, but any flavor will work. Then you're gonna add your tzatziki on the top and then your veggies. I added some cucumber, some red onion, some banana peppers, some roasted red peppers, and some half cherry tomatoes. You could also add olives if you like them, but I just don't like olives very much. Then I took a can of chickpeas, roasted them in the oven, and put those on top as well. Then I added in a whole tub of the feta cheese. I did a whole tub. You could do less, but it's cheese, so why not? Then you add your honey, and it might sound weird, but it's one of the best parts of the dip, so if you like honey, don't skip this step. It's great with pita chips or pita bread, but I really love it in green. Potato. Step one, wash and peel your potatoes. Slice them. If you're afraid of the mandolin, use a knife, but I'm an adult. Just mix them around a little bit. We're gonna wash all that starch off the outside. Grab your favorite baking dish and start layering the potatoes in there and season every other layer. So I'm doing salt, white pepper, and thyme. If you wanna use things like nutmeg, go for it. Once you reach the top, hit it with a good hefty pinch of seasoning. In this pot, I have equal parts milk and cream, and I'm grating garlic into it. Once your cream is hot, just pour it over. Take your potatoes into a preheated oven. 45 minutes later, the potatoes come out. Just trim this paper off the sides. This is smoked salt. Then I'm gonna add chives. I would honestly just serve it like this. Do you have any idea how thrilled I would be if I went to go eat somewhere and they walked out with this? I would, I would just be happy as a clam. 
Are you ready to surprise your guests with these puffs of pure godimento? This is a very specific type of onion called cipolla borettana. Go on a hunt for them because trust me, it's worth it. After washing them and removing the skin that lays on top, put them in a cold pan with a drizzle of olive oil and cover with water. Cover with a lid and cook on low heat for 15 minutes. Then remove it and let the water evaporate. When ready, sprinkle some salt and enjoy. Buon appetito! What's one food you can't live without? For me, it's bread. Now, if you've never had grilled bread, you're doing something wrong. Cut it in half like so, drizzle olive oil, and then place it on the grill. My grill was on high heat, and when I flipped it over, it took a few minutes to get nice and toasty. Now, once it's starting to get toasty, hit it with a little flavored butter. I'm using butter from Churn. They have everything, bagel seasoning butter, pesto butter, shallot garlic butter, miso, tomato, basil, and even a sweet cinnamon maple butter. Yeah, you can make your own compound butter, but this is just so easy. This recipe is for all those people who want to bring their food to the next level, but don't want to spend too much time. Real quick plug, go to churnfoods.com for the butter. This recipe is fantastic on its own, that crunch. It's great by itself, it's great on the side of pasta. We grilled a whole loaf of bread, but my dad and I basically ate it by ourselves. But I'm gonna ask you. It's soup season. Okay, so stay and watch if you want to learn how to make this. First, I'm going to cook up my hamburger, and I like to cook it by itself because I like to strain out all the fat, grease, and juice from it. Um, if you like to keep yours, that's up to you. I ain't down. So next, I'm going to take some avocado oil in my pot, and I'm going to saute up my veggies all together until the onions become translucent. And I'm going to add some salt just to help it out. I let that cook for about 10 minutes. Now I'm going to go in with whole tomatoes, diced tomatoes, tomato paste, and onion soup mix. The secret to getting out your tomato paste is by taking off both sides with your can opener. I like to add in Worcestershire sauce, oregano, basil, and some sugar. I also use the entire container of beef broth. Remember that hamburger that we cooked earlier? Now it's going back in along with some elbow macaroni. So here's the real secret to making soup. Once you add in that macaroni to avoid a mushy, gross mess, put your lid on, turn your burner off, walk away, let it rest for 10 to 12 minutes, you come back and it will be perfect. Enjoy. And I served mine up with some oven bannock. I started to eat more vegetables when I found good ways to cook them. So here I have my favorite vegetables. I have carrot, butternut squash, broccoli, mushroom, and Brussels sprouts, but you could do any of your favorites. Pepper, um, cauliflower, zucchini. You're going to add some coconut oil to a warm pan, add your vegetables, oh, forgot the onion, and then you're going to add your favorite seasoning, salt, pepper, Mrs. Dash, whatever it may be. While those are cooking with a lid on top, when they're almost done, you're going to fry two eggs. My mom showed me the trick how you add some water to your eggs, put a lid on them, and then you get that nice coating without flipping them over. And then when your veggies are done, you're going to plate them, add the two eggs, add everything but the bagel seasoning, Parmesan cheese, salt, pepper, and it's so good. Two ingredient keto chicken nuggets. Microwave your cheese until it's barely melted. Then add in your cooked chicken and mix well. Maybe use your fist to punch it a few times. Pow, pow. Form the nuggets on a greased baking sheet. Broil until you get the nice golden color. Kylie Jenner has only liked 32 videos on TikTok. One of them is my crispy potato recipe. But I'll let you be the judge. Listen. This is my take on a classic British technique with a little bit of food science. Yukon gold or red potatoes, cold water, and a lot of kosher salt. You're not actually gonna eat all that salt, but we're creating a diffusion gradient to get some of the salt inside the potatoes so they're flavorful throughout. When they're fork tender, rough them up with a spoon. This increases the surface area and gives you more places to get crispy. Be generous with the oil. You could also use like duck fat or goose fat if you had that. I'm adding fresh rosemary, a lot of Old Bay paprika. I like sweet paprika. Garlic powder, freshly ground black pepper, oregano, thyme, and a little bit of Malden salt. Get everything mixed up and then I added a little bit more Old Bay because I thought it needed it. Roast at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. When they look like this, turn off the oven but let them sit inside for 10 more minutes. It gets them extra crispy. The written recipe is on my website. Let's make this online recipe cherry cheesecake. Four ingredients. One can of cherry pie filling and an eight by eight Pyrex. Make it as even as you can. One box of cake mix. We're gonna sprinkle half of this over the cherries. Boom, some cream cheese and cut it into cubes like this, and I have about that much left. Just place it like that. Now the other half of the cake mix is gonna be sprinkled over the cream cheese. Even it out like that. Slice up thinly a stick of butter. Boom. Try to cover all the cake mix with butter pats, and if you need more butter, cut more butter. 
Just like that. I only needed a little bit more. Bake at 350 for about 40 minutes. Time to come out. All done, and we're gonna let her cool for 20 minutes. Completely cooled, but I would have used the whipped cream cheese instead of the regular. Mmm, still so good. Are you missing snacks like popcorn? I have a great idea for you. Start with a hard type of cheese. I'm gonna use Gouda here. Just cut it up into cubes and leave it to sit on your countertop for 48 to 72 hours. We want it to become rock hard, that's key. And I'm just gonna put a cover on it because when you put these in the oven, they actually pop up like real popcorn. It's really kind of cool. And when it comes out of the oven, just drain all the fat and what you're left with is an airy, crunchy, zero carb popcorn-like snack. So if you're not already following me, don't forget to hit that like and follow button for more keto-friendly recipes like this one.